All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to define the most important set in analysis, the contour set. And yes, it's not a very endearing term. You can't just say, I love you so much, you're my contour. No, 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 it's kind of a Halloween vibe to it. That said, it is very important, so let's construct it, and it's a very nice construction. So step one, start with the interval 0, 1. So f1 is 0, 1. And then you can split this into three pieces, to like three numbers, 1 3rd and 2 thirds, And just remove the middle piece. And once you remove it, you get two sub-intervals, and those will be called F2. So step two. So you have the two sub-intervals, 0, 1 third, and then 2 thirds, and 1. And then you just get F2, which is 0, 1 third, closed interval, union, 2 thirds, and 1. And then you just continue each sub-piece divide them up into three pieces, and just remove the middle third of each sub-piece. So step three, you get, I think, zero one-ninths, two-ninths, and then one-third, and then I believe two-thirds, which is six-ninths, and seven-ninths, and eight-ninths, and one. And that gives you F3. And then just continue in the same way. Namely, given any Fn, you define Fn plus 1 by just removing the middle third of each Fn. So, and then in general, given Fn, define Fn plus 1 by removing the middle third of each sub-interval. Of Fn. And then essentially, you get this nice hierarchy of sets so again, we started with F1, and then we had F2, and then we had F3, and then we have F4. So very unstable IKEA set, if you want. And then essentially, da 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 da. Essentially, then what we want to take is just the intersection. So F, which is called the Cantor set is the intersection. So, definition, so the Cantor set, <laughs> I love this word, it's just defined to be F, which is the intersection from 1 to infinity of Fn. And the rest of today's video is just stating a couple of neat properties of the Cantor set. Remember, F is just the intersection of all those little pieces. Okay. Now, um, first of all, F is a closed set. And why is that true? Because each Fn is closed. And you're just taking the intersection of infinitely many closed sets. Moreover, and kind of what's more interesting, is that F is non-empty. Because it could be possible that if you take the intersection of those infinitely many sets, that the intersection might be empty. But this is not true because of the video I've done on the finite intersection property. Notice the Fn they're kind of decreasing and closed and non-empty. So by the finite intersection property, the intersection is non-empty. That's a good application, if you want, of the finite intersection property. Moreover, let's check out the following. So what is the size of F? So let's look at 
let's say F, let's say one, two, F3, which, remember it's the thing with zero and one ninth, right? Well, in that case, F3, how many pieces does it have? So F3 has four pieces, which if you want, it's two squared, which is two to the three minus one pieces. Of what length? Of length, well, one ninth, which is one third squared, which is one third to the three minus one. And indeed, this is also true for Fn, so Fn has two to the n minus one pieces of length one third to the n minus one. And in particular, the total length of Fn is just this times this, because each piece times the length of each piece. So number of pieces times the length of the each piece. So the length of Fn is, if you want, two to the n minus one times one third to the n minus one, which is just two thirds to the n minus one. But the point is, as n goes to infinity, this goes to zero. So what is the length of f? Well, it's smaller than the length of any of the fn's, so the length of f is actually zero. So, uh, so mm, the size or the length, it's what's called the measure of f, is zero. That said, even though the length is zero, the cool thing is f is uncountable. So kind of you have to picture f as being a huge number of just dust, which has a size zero. And then um, not only that, and I'll explain why it's uncountable, not only that, f in some sense is like the rational numbers in the sense that the interior is empty, meaning that no matter which point you pick, there's no ball that, that's inside that uh, canter set. No matter how small r is, the ball of uh, center that point and radius r isn't in that set. So it's really like dust, you know, like you're just sprinkling dust with no interior. And then not only that, let me see. Uh, well, it's also stuff you might not understand. So f is compact, whatever that means. But we'll discuss it in the next video. Uh, perfect. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> and also totally disconnected. Totally, man. Mean totally disconnected really means it's very disconnected. In other words, there's no like sub interval in that uh, counter set. And um, also, that's kind of weird to prove, but it turns out, in some sense, any metric space is actually a subset of the Cantor set. It's very weird. It can be thought of as a subset of the Cantor set. Very weird, but again, I don't even, I don't know how to prove this. Um, all right, however, last thing I want to say, even though it's such a weird set, uh, it turns out there's a very natural description of um, the Cantor set in terms of what's called ternary expansions. So expansions in base three. So first of all, let me remind you what a decimal expansion is. A decimal expansion Just the expansion of a number where the digits are between uh, 0 and uh, 9. So 0, 9, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, da, da, da. So that's a decimal expansion. A binary expansion, 
and we'll also talk about this expansion is the same thing but where the digits are just zero and one so zero one 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 zero one 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 zero 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 dot 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 okay just like the computer that uses bit strings and then ternary expansion Well, same thing, except you're just using the digits 0, 1, and 2. So 0, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. I almost sound like a computer. But the point is the digits are either 0, 1, or 2. And now let's think about the Cantor set. So, notice, so this is the interval 0, comma, 1. Well, what does it mean to remove the middle third? So zero, one third, uh, two thirds, one. Well, let's think about this a little bit. So suppose your number in the ternary expansion starts at 0 0.1 and then stuff. In this thing, the numbers are of the form 0, 0.0 something. Da, da, da. But then one third is of the form 0 0.1, 0, 0, 0, 0 in the ternary expansion. But then in this interval, all the numbers, they start with two, like 0 0.2 something, something, something. So indeed, notice by removing the middle third, we actually remove all the numbers that start with one here in terms of uh, the binary, the ternary expansion. And then let's continue. What about those things here? Well, again, here the number doesn't start with 0 0.1, but here the number is of the form 0, 0.0, 0 something. Okay. Here the number is of the form 0, 0.02 something. Here the number is of the form 0, 0.020 0 something. And here the number is of the form 0 0.22 something in terms of expansions. So notice by removing the second middle third, you removed any number of the form either 0 0.01 something and 0 0.0, 0 0.21 something. And Successively, if you think about this, what is the Cantor set? It's any number whose ternary expansion has no one. So Cantor set, because at every point, you're removing um, numbers whose, the, whose ternary expansion has a one in it. So note. C is nothing other. Then the set of uh, uh, the set of numbers of numbers in the interval zero one that do not have one in its ternary expansion. So for instance, think of the number 0 0.222000202. That's fine, that's in the Cantor set, but the number 0 0.221000022, that's not in the Cantor set. So you're just considering numbers without one in the um, ternary expansion. And if you think about this, this actually shows that the Cantor set has, uh, is uncountable because notice, given any number in the Cantor set, say again 0 0.22202, well, there's actually a nice one-to-one -one correspondence between those numbers and the numbers with binary expansion. How? Just divide by two. So if you divide all the numbers in the Cantor set by two, you get all the binary expansions. But the point is, since every number in zero, one can be expressed as a binary expansion, 
This thing is just nothing else in the interval 0, 1, maybe closed interval. So indeed, what you've shown is C has the same cardinality as 0, 1. As uh, 0, 1. And therefore, this also shows that C is uncountable. Thank you very much.